Hello everyone and welcome to The Last Gamers Room Tour for mid-2017. The room's currently between 70 and 80% complete because there's still a lot to do. So I thought it's at least six months away until it's fully complete. Why not do one now? Hello, my name is Joel Hopkins. I'm going to show you at the end of the video how I hook up my LCDs and my CRTs. For now, we're going to look at my Sega Dreamcast collection. I've got a full set of Sega Dreamcast games. They're not all here at the moment. They're in the cinema room. And Jess, who also is a part of Last Gamer, is bringing them in and cataloging them at the same time. This is where my USA collection goes for the Sega Dreamcast. So without boring you too much, let's get on to one of my favorite collections, which is the Sega Saturn. This is probably the first console I had a full set for, the Sega Saturn. And I just love this collection. All up, there's 1,274 games for the Japanese Sega Saturn. I don't have the Australian versions of Sega Saturn games, or even the American versions for that matter. I mainly focus on the Japanese games themselves. They're all in alphabetical order and probably about 30 to 40% you can't actually read from the spines. But it is such an iconic console and definitely one of my favorite consoles, especially of that time. Um, a couple of games I can pick out and show you would be Radiant Silver Gun. Absolutely love this game. I'm surprised the CD hasn't worn out. I've thrashed this to bits. I've also got it on the STV. That's the Sega Titan video game arcade board. And they're pretty much identical. The Saturn one is actually better in some respects as it's got a longer mode. Awesome game. I could go on forever about the Saturn games. I just love probably 90% of them. The other 10% are either RPG Japanese games that I can't read or play. And then there's some really weird games in the mix. So we'll move on from Sega Saturn. So from Saturn, we're going way back, and that's to look at the Mark III games. These are the current Mark III games I've got. I think I've got another box of Mark III games to put up, but I'm very, very, very close to a full set of Mark III games. That's every single game. There wasn't as many Mark III, also known as the Mars System games, released in Japan as there was Australia, Europe, and New Zealand. So that's a little, um, little info fact there. There's also, I've got some SG-1000 games there, and I've got another box somewhere that still have to go up. But this shelf will be full once it's complete. And I've got various consoles up there, and we'll be definitely doing reviews of those consoles in due course. Okay, so now we're going to go to my first love in video game consoles, and that was the Sega Master System. It kind of was the Atari 2600, but when I got my Sega Master System, there was just something magical. Absolutely love this system. I didn't start off on NES, uh, I started off on Master System. And I remember going to school, everyone had a NES, and not many had a Master System. But by the time I got to high school, that kind of changed around, so that's interesting. Anyway, this is a full set of Master System games. A lot of them aren't here yet, but once they come, they'll get flipped around. Um, so they're kind of just fluffed out for the camera at the moment, so we're not looking at blank shelves. I've done that through the room, but uh, once Jess brings in the rest of the games, um, this shelf will be absolutely, completely full. So that's my Mars System collection. As I said, I love it. I play it a lot. Believe it or not, I play my Mars System at least, probably once to twice a week at times. Now before we look at the Sega Mega Drive, I will mention a classic, where are we? Quartet. This is one of the first games I had on Mars System. I can play the hell out of this game and still be entertained, even to this day. This is my very copy, and I've kept it in pretty good condition, actually. So, and that was bought back in 1986, I think, from memory. Does it have a date on 87, it says here. So yeah, I thought it was 86, but um, yeah, 87. Yeah, that was one of my first big games that I just thought, oh, this system's just, it's to die for. So. That's my mentioned game on the Master System. Coming to my favorite console. So number one at the top is the Sega Mega Drive, also known in America as the Sega Genesis. So the Sega Mega Drive was my first true import console. I actually bought the console from England. It was a Japanese gray import, and I had it early in 1988, whereas Australia got it in 1990. We will touch up upon this story in story mode, 
which is one of the segments on Last Gamer. I've got the full set of Sega Mega Drive games. Off the top of my head, I think it's 421. I can't remember the exact amount, could be completely wrong. The holy grail of this collection is this game, which we'll definitely, definitely do a review on. Um, a lot of people think there's eight in the world. There's actually between three and five. It never got released. It's Tetris for the Sega Mega Drive. It's even got a serial number of 007. I love that part because I'm a big James Bond fan, um, which does actually exist in the Mega Drive serial number library. I got it from a good friend at Capcom who knew someone at Sega a long, long time ago. And yes, it's, it's a very, very rare game. Uh, there's a big story behind it and we will cover it in a review of that game in time. All other Sega Mega Drive games, I just love nearly every game on the Mega Drive. I just love the Sega Mega Drive. I love the shoot 'em ups I love the sound, even though some people criticize it. I reckon the sound is just awesome on the Mega Drive, the FM sound chip. Uh, Tatsujin's one of my favorites, it's an early release. Um, awesome shoot 'em up um, Also, which is right next to it, is uh, the Super Shinobi, also known as Revenger Shinobi. Tatsujin's also known as Truxton in uh, the Western world. And they're 19 and 20, they're serial numbers. So we'll put that back. Forgotten Worlds, anyone who knows me knows I absolutely love Forgotten Worlds. Arcade, Master System, Mega Drive, Amiga, Commodore 64. I love all versions of Forgotten Worlds, uh, another awesome game. I can go on for ages about the Mega Drive, there's nothing, I can just pick a random game. That's Art Alive probably, that's not the best example. It's more of a kid game, so it's got me. Next to a Toe Jam and Earl, fantastic game. I remember completing that, it took me ages to find all the puzzles to get the spaceship. Uh, top, top game. Um, look at this, two crew dudes, fantastic. Um, just, Mega Drive has had some really good arcade licenses. Um, you know, I, I just, bare knuckles, I mean, how can you go wrong? It was a really, really good um, console. I never had a Genesis, ever. Uh, I mainly concentrate on the Japanese version of Mega Drive, and even the Australian games, I never really um, went down that track until recently, I started um, buying up a lot of Genesis games because there are a lot of exclusives that never come out on the Japanese Mega Drive that did make its way um, in the European markets and on the Genesis. So we'll go down this aisle now, and this is Mega CD and Game Gear. Now we will talk about Game Gear. I know it sounds corny, but one of my favorite games on Game Gear is Columns. It's extremely playable. Columns is fun. The music is awesome. And it's awesome because it was portable. I remember taking it to work and playing Columns. Columns and Haley's Comet, I won't be able to find it quick. Hang on, hang on. Yes, I will. There you go. So Haley's Comet, it's a shoot 'em up by Tato. It was on the arcade. I've actually got the arcade board. Top game. A lot of controversial about the Mega CD or Sega CD in the Western world, or in America, I should say. Mega CD in Europe and Australia and everywhere else. Uh, I love the Mega CD. Coming out, uh, when it came out, I was a little bit disappointed, but you get to love the games over time. It's an acquired taste. Um, Jess just found one of the games before. It was still sealed, this one. So I don't know what's the go there. I've actually got the game, but I must have, um, I, I don't know what happened while I've got a double. But anyway, that's that's how it is. Uh, the 32X, I've still got to put the rest of the 32X games up. Um, and most of the games that you'll see in this room tour I've had from back in the day. It's not like I've just went and bought a lot of them now. I've been collecting for a long, long, long time. Um, probably seriously collecting since the mid 80s. Uh, not in the 90s, was definitely mid 80s to late 80s. I just wanted to uh, collect a massive games because I would just play, you know, like literally like 100 hours a week back in the day. Um, we will move from the 32X to the Genesis. The Genesis is all over the place at the moment, and I'm still sorting it out. Um, so yeah, just basically in alphabetical order. And as I said, this stuff I've kind of got recently. I did have some Genesis games back in the day that I used to import because they weren't available on the Japanese Mega Drive. Gee, this is in good nick actually, this one. There's a golden axe poster there. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's something that I've wanted to have a full set of Genesis games which is in the works at the moment, but I've got so much else to do. These are my, my um, the Australian Mega Drive games. I have got more, 
and we're just sorting them out at the moment, but it's all kind of over the place and I've just had them over time. All right, so moving along, because it is going to take a while to get through all this stuff, I've got my soundtracks here. So you can always tell a Konami soundtrack um, by these yellow bands, that's how I tell it anyway. So I've got a lot more <clears throat> soundtracks than this, but at the moment, um, that's where the soundtracks are gonna be put. These are my MSX games, uh, Nemesis 2 and Salamander. Have got a few more, but not a lot of MSX games. They're very expensive at the moment. Um, it's actually becoming very hard to collect for because games like this, four or $500, kid you not. Uh, especially this Salamander um, with the gold. Uh, my 3DO collection, there's Police Thoughts there and just some other various uh, Japanese games, but that'll be a full uh, list going down of Japanese games. Now we move over to another classic console. Who can not look past the PC Engine, also known as the TurboGrafx-16? So these are the Hue cards. These are the uh, just the normal CD-ROMs, Super CD-ROMs. Again, they're not all here. We're trying to put them in alphabetical order. Um, as I said, when I said the room is 70% complete, that's what's not complete. There's a lot of games still not in here, and some are. So we're still um, organizing and arranging. So yeah, these are the normal CD-ROMs, these are Super CD-ROMs, and that's the arcade um, CD-ROM for the PC Engine. PC Engine, an absolute classic console, something that's small, 8-bit, uh, and it really takes it up to a lot of the 16 bits of the time, in my opinion. Um, I've got, like, I've still got Outrun kind of, um, yeah, shrink-wrapped because, or, or sealed, only because I've got the card loose and I thought, well, I'm not going to open that one up. Space Harrier, Fantasy Zone, Power Drift, I keep, try and keep my games in order, like, you know, Sega, because it's quite hard to read them. Look, apart from Power Drift, you kind of can't see what's going on there. So, yeah, and it, the funny thing is Power Drift never came out on the Mega Drive, it was supposed to. Anyway, it came out on the PC Engine, it was really good to have that. If you didn't have the arcade, Back then, you know, that was kind of the best port going around. Uh, again, this is where the Genesis games will come up to, and this is enough to hold the full library of Genesis games. So before we head down this Commodore 64 and Spectrum aisle, I've got shelving at the end of each aisle and kind of things I love and things that stand out, collectibles and all that. That's kind of my last ninja shrine, if you like. It is one of my favorite games growing up on the Commodore 64 sure with people with the Commodore 64 is a lot of people's favorite game. So I've just got the versions there. Then my Super Graphics PC Engine. Got a Fujitsu Marty up here. So let's head down the Commodore 64 aisle. I should actually say Commodore 64 Spectrum. I've got to hang on and work out which one's which. So this is the Spectrum, this is the Commodore 64. Now if you're not familiar, Spectrum um, is predominantly a computer that was released in the UK, but it did go worldwide, but it was much more popular in Europe. Commodore 64 is definitely more worldwide than Spectrum. Well, it was for Australia at least, and it was extremely popular in Australia, the Commodore 64.